This is FYF Sports Menace Lamont. We are back with another podcast episode. Hey man, today we got some news out of the WNBA. And I know we don't talk about the WNBA a lot, but the WNBA season is here. Games have been played. The season is going. And, and if you haven't been keeping up with it, well, as, as we've already discussed on our channel, we all understand that the WNBA doesn't do a very good job of promoting these teams and putting these players in these matchups out in front of us to galvanize us as fans enough to, to make us go seek out these games, watch them, and even cheer some of these teams on. Hopefully, this is something that the WNBA can fix, but... Even with that being a major problem, a major concern, the WNBA has other problems that they need to address. And I think it it all goes hand in hand with a lot of the things that we've talked about. Um, and I think this is a big, big glaring problem. What I just found out today, before we get started, uh, before we get started on this particular story about the WNBA, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell if you haven't done so already. Go to the description of the video, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, join our Discord. All right, that way you guys don't miss any notifications when these videos drop. All right, some of you guys have been saying the, not the notification bell hasn't been giving you all the notifications. Well, again, when we drop videos, we put out notifications everywhere on social media, including our Discord. So again, we don't want you to miss those notifications. So make sure you're following us on social media. But back to the WNBA. Um, WNBA is story. This is a story about the number eight draft pick, Shyla Hill. Um, this is this was the Australian uh, born guard. She got drafted from overseas. Extremely good player internationally. Played professional over there. Um, she entered her name into the draft at 19 years old. Extremely young as a prospect, um, and she was drafted with the number eight pick. A lottery pick in the WNBA draft drafted with the number eight pick to the Chicago Sky. Um, and, and, and when you think when you when you think of yourself as a lottery pick, so again we can look at this whether it's football, hockey, whatever sport. Whenever you get drafted in the first round of a sport, you expect that to be drafted to an organization that's saying, "Look, we feel like we have a great." prospect on our hands we're going to do everything possible to mold and develop this young talent for the future and then that's what the WNBA you know with all the promotion and things that they put out this draft class with Charlie Collier and all of the dr young draft picks in this draft this was supposed to be the next wave of stars you know, we, we, you know, we have we have a, a set of stars in college basketball still looking to move on. But this draft was really supposed to open it up. Um, and Shyla Hill was one of those players bringing some international flavor to this draft. And I just want to read to you guys this story because this story is absolutely crazy. Um, let me go ahead and pull this story up for you guys. So we have rising Australian basketball star Shyla Hill. Um, she's actually already on the lookout for a new WNBA club just weeks into her rookie season. Shyla Hill was cut by the Chicago Sky while at the airport preparing for her first road trip. She was traded to the Dallas Wings, who then waived the 19-year-old uh, uh, Aussie guard immediately. Um, so, you know, in a showcase of the brutal business reality of professional sports, her departure from Chicago Sky is only six weeks after the franchise selected her as the number eight pick in the 2021 WNBA draft. The Sky traded the Australian guard to the Dallas Wings in exchange for the number 13 pick, Dana Evans, while the franchise also sent its 2022 third round pick to the Wings. Dallas once they made this trade, they immediately waived Shyla Hill without her even joining the club. And this was a crazy story. Crazy, crazy story. Uh, it was a crazy story coming out of uh, Chicago. Uh, when you look at a young prospect like this, no training camp, no preseason, not a lot of time to get ready for the WNBA season after getting here to the United States. 
in only two practices in 20 minutes on the court of playing time, the Chicago Sky were actually on a five-game losing streak. So what does the Chicago Sky decide to do? The Chicago Sky and Shiloh Hill wasn't the only pick to get cut. They cut two first-round picks. They cut Stephanie Wells, the number 10 pick, and they cut Shyla Hill, which ultimately they didn't cut Shyla Hill. They traded her, but they knew that the Dallas Wings would immediately waive her. And I want you guys to tell me right here. And the problem with this is in what other sport, what other professional sport in the world do you see lottery picks get cut six months into their tenure with a team? Not because of off the court issues, not because they're out of shape or whatever. The Chicago Sky head coach said she didn't have enough experience. If you don't want a young player, then why don't you just trade your pick before you even draft a player at that particular position? And then you draft a player just to cut that player trade and cut that player and wait i just again what how is your league how is this league how is this WNBA league how is this supposed to grow and develop when the best prospects coming in two of the top 10 prospects coming into your draft have now been waived you already don't do a good job of selling the players that are there there's only a handful of players that we actually know and that's because some of these players are actually models off the court when we talk about Liz Cambage and Skylar Diggins, you know, Natalie Achamwa. These players actually do things on social media themselves to showcase themselves. It's not the WNBA, but ultimately that's not what's going to galvanize sports fans to go show up to your games just because you're a model. We want to know what are the best matchups, who are the premier players. What are the basketball barbershop conversations surrounding your league that we can discuss and have arguments about? And how can we have those conversations when your brightest and youngest stars, you're not even giving them time to develop? You waive the number eight pick, you waive the number 10 pick in your draft. And that's not that's not even mentioning all of the second round picks that were waived as well. So all of the premier young talent coming into your league, you waive them. And you wonder why a lot of the stars simply go overseas and don't want to come back and join this league. You tell people to watch the WNBA. You tell us you 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 make these complaints talking about the the disparity in the in the pay between WNBA and NBA players. You have people like Chauncey Billups who actually stepped up and said, even if the league is operating at a loss, you should pay these women more. But why? When you're a league that is detrimental to yourself. If I'm the owner of the Chicago Sky, I'm saying, I don't care what we do, but we're not cutting our number eight lottery pick. We're going to build around her. We're going to see what we have, and we're not going to give her 20 minutes of playing time on the court before we determine that she doesn't have enough experience to play. This is, it's about building champions. All right, and we, and, 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 and again, I don't know what the Chicago Sky are hoping for. I don't know if they were looking to have an instant impact, instant playoff contender down there. We know that Candace Parker recently signed with that team. I don't know what they expect with this roster if they're not developing their young talent. Um, but again, I want you guys, let me know what you think about this particular story. I think the WNBA is just doing themselves a disservice um w- without any other leagues you know it's not like the WNBA has a G League or any other leagues that they can send her down to to maybe help her prepare and get ready catch up with the, what the team is already doing they just simply wave her send her back to Australia and and she is now looking for her next uh WNBA job her dad a former NBA player uh, Dan Hill he was extremely upset with the move um, and there also have been a number of d- NBA players who came come out um, to Shyla Hill's defense. Um, we talk about like players like Damian Lillard who stepped up and they said they definitely don't agree with this move. And, and again, you have to think, where is this league going? What is the future outlook of this league when lottery picks are getting waived before they even have time to showcase themselves on the court? 
You guys, let me know what you think about this. I think it's a bad look for the WNBA. I, I think it's an extremely bad look for the Chicago Sky and the management over there, the direction that that team wants to go. Um, they've made a number of questionable moves, that coaching staff and that front office, that the fans are extremely disgruntled with. Um, when you wave your the number 10 pick in the draft, when you wave the number 8 pick in the draft, and the team is one of the worst in the league on a five-game losing streak, you would think that would be a prime opportunity to play some of your younger players so you can look to develop going, you know, going forward into the future. But obviously, they see things in a different light. You guys, let me know in the comments what you think about this right here. Um, again... I, I would love to have some WNBA players on this platform to discuss this. I would love to have representatives from the Chicago Sky over here to discuss this as well. But again, I think it's a, a, a very backwards, it's a backwards lateral move. It's not productive to the league. And, it, and it's ultimately a bad look when you're cutting lottery picks before they play games. You know, we're not going to see these players. Whatever fan base that she had in Australia that was maybe going to be watching those Chicago Sky games. That fan base has completely been eliminated. How many people in Australia are now turned off to WNBA basketball um, because of this particular move? Again, a bad, bad, bad look for me. Um, and I really hope that the WNBA can find a way to rejuvenate his league. But making moves like this is not the way to go. Um, I wish this league the best. Shyla Hill, I definitely wish her the best. I'm, I'm positive that a WNBA team is, is going to seek to sign her. Um, but I, I didn't even, you know, when I looked at the time that she had on the court, I didn't even really have enough time to evaluate what she could be. You know, when, when she played professionally in Australia, you're talking about a guard who averaged 25 points a game, seven assists, looked like a great floor general and a shot maker. WNBA didn't think so. Uh, we'd love to hear more from you guys in the comments. Hey, but it's FYF Sports, man. It's been another great podcast episode. Uh, we'll be back with more sports and news later. Make sure you guys go to the description of the video. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and join our Discord. Uh, make sure you do that so you can stay up to date with everything we're dropping here at FYF Sports. Hey, but it's FYF Sports. It's been another great podcast episode. We'll be back with more sports and news later. But until then, it's FYF.